What is up guys? This is Alex from First of Figures. Hey there everyone, this is Chuckles. Who do we have here? Okami's Chui! Yay! Before we get into it too much, can we just address mm. two things? All right. First of all, let's pay attention. This is the first time we've ever done it. Our new backdrop. Our new backdrop. <laughs> and it really made sense because, of course, Shiranui is completely all in white. And we needed to... We, we, we first started mm. trying doing this mm. with a typical white background. But, of course, mm. she didn't quite have that pop. <laughs> right? That, that, that's right, yeah. Now she's really popping. Even Well, even you are popping. And I'm, I'm very subtle and I'm blending <laughs> with, with the background. So i got a floaty head. Floaty head, floaty arms. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing is, we're mm. going to have to make a decision right now. Right here, right now. Okay. Shiranui, mm -hmm. is a boy or is a girl? Ah. Now this is something that we have to establish the ground rules right now because we're going to be referring to Shiranui mm. in one of. Now of course, in the actual original Japanese, yeah. Shiranui is actually genderless. Mm. So it's kind of like, do we, every time we talk about Shiranui, we say he, she, or do we say it, or I All feel right. like we need to make a decision. Mm. And I, Jocks, I'm gonna go with female, but you may want to go with male. So every time you refer to <laughs> Shiranui, you, I'll, you go, might I'll, be... I'll not go hey. You know, <laughs> I was gonna say she because like there's a, there's a he, a she, and a he. Well, in, there in, you go. And in Chinese, I think that means angry. <laughs> Does it? I think so. But he, a boy, girl, and a boy. What was that? Somebody tell me. That know? could be uh, something else. If yes. You know what I mean. Um, <laughs> but we're not gonna go there right now. But I'm gonna be referring to Shiranui as a female. My reasoning is because of course she is a reincarnation. What should I say? I'm a Tratsu. Mother of us all, mm. female, Shiranui, is a reincarnation. Uh, sorry, Amaterasu is a reincarnation of Shiranui, nice. so I'm going to go with female. There have been different schools sure. of thought, mm. and they all have merit. No one's right, no one's wrong. That's what I'm going to go with. All right, I'm just going to call Shiranui, Shiranui. You're going to want to say she every now and then. I'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, guys, okay. here we are. It's been a while. Yep. We've been working on Shiranui for a while. But, you know, the vision of Shiranui actually started way back when, when we made the original Amaterasu mm. that we did, the one-fourth scale statue, of course, with the, um, you know, with the original one-fourth scale one. Right. Shall we start off and say thank you for coming back for if you're an Okami fan yeah thank you for coming back I'm sure this is this will probably be the second video that we've made because obviously the one the first one we did was the Okami life-size bus the, the second yeah. one will be this one Shirinui in terms of it, this is actually our third Okami yes. product third Okami product yeah. but two it's the second video in the, the documentary the making of documentary that's series. right so yeah. tell me a bit more about this making of documentary yeah. job. so if this is your first time watching this video thanks for joining us uh, this video will go through everything with regards to the making of. So, uh, how did we get from early stages up until this stage right now before we go into the pre orders? And then uh, basically, you can find us on First of Figures Official Collectors Club where we create a post in the club every time we do a launch. So, if you have any questions uh, you want us to answer, you can jump into that post and ask away. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, whilst we're going into that, Jocks, boom. And I should bring attention to our new turntable here, which is yes. actually really quite speedy. Speedy, speedy. <laughs> so it can keep going round and round. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, so in terms of the uh, the club and the making of documentary, we always ask guys in terms of if there are any specific questions that you yeah. may want to ask. And I believe we have a list of questions today, Chocks. Is that yes, right? We have. Right. Shall we jump straight into it? Hey, why not? Okay. Let's do cool. It. All right. First question from Anthony Lizard. Uh, why Shirinui instead of the other Okami characters this far in the line? Is it to match the quarter scale Ami? Well, you know, that's a great question and I think it really goes back to what we just said at the beginning of the video, which was Shirinui was really supposed to be part of a... definitely supposed to be a companion piece to the original one fourth scale Ami. And of course, we will have a, um, a couple of comparison videos with Amaterasu, you know, with Ami later on, Amaterasu. Um, but <laughs> You know, they were designed to be a pair and it made sense as the, you know, as Amaterasu was a reincarnation of Shirinuri to have them sort of being able to be displayed together. But of course, look really great on her own. On her own. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and now, if in terms of, in terms of other characters, 
we would really love to hear from you guys. What would you like to see? Would you like to see some of the other celestial brush gods? What would you like to see? Would you like to see Nine Tails? You know, there are many different things that you could, uh, we could discuss, <laughs> and we'd love to hear your input on that. But you know, working on Okami, working with Amaterasu, and then thinking about Shironui, it all really made sense to tie it all together and have um, um, Shironui be the next one in the line. All right, cool. Yeah, good answer. All right, next question from uh, Brandon Rostello. Uh, how did you decide on the pose? Well, the pose itself was decided by the club. Now, we talked about this club a little bit earlier about getting yeah. your um, questions answered in there. But actually, the club goes beyond that. It goes, as I just discussed there, about helping to de de develop and shape the line itself. And once you've actually decided on a character, the the sometimes we even go as far as saying, hey, would you like to have some sort of influence on the pose itself? And I actually offered a couple of choices in the club on Shiranui's pose. And the first was one with a hand up, with the, well, this one here obviously, <laughs> with the paw up, and the other one was more sort of crouched down, almost like ready to attack. Mm. Now, Shiranui almost has this sort of magical, majestical, celestial kind of styling to her, where she's incredibly, she's this god in this wolf form, and it's like this pose, it's quite sort of regal, majestic, and if you go for a kind of like an attack pose, yeah, of course, she's, she has fights in the game, but, mm. but this sort of, this sort of, you know, this sort of, uh, as we just said, the sort of majesty, the kind of, um, that sort of feeling, the royalty feeling that you kind of get with this pose, this is the one that the majority of the people, when we went, when we did a vote, they went for this pose, mm -hmm. and and I agree. And I think it's also important to note that the the there is some official artwork of Shiranui, some concept pictures that also has her doing this in the pose mm -hmm. as well. So, in terms of the pose itself, how do we come up with it? Well, that was a mixture between the club and, of course, the choices that I gave the club in the first place and. Ultimately, that's what we went with. Because you know, originally we worked with Capcom, the um, you know the licensor, to get some of uh, to get their input as well to say, do we have some sort of some sort of design choices as well? And they also came up with a few as well. And mm -hmm. from there, I actually I think we had maybe four or five of them. I took the the, the top two, I felt, mm -hmm. and that's the ones that we then came and involved the club in. So actually, there was a few other choices. Some of them weren't, weren't too practical, you know, jumping in the air, or, oh, you know, right. which is, yeah. you know, there's some, some engineering that you could do, but realistically, this was designed to be similar to Okami, uh, sorry, Amaterasu in terms of the size of the base, the yep. sort of whole feeling and putting them next to each other as well. So that's sort of where we, we, we came up with that. All right, cool. All right, uh, next question from uh, Jessica Kastik. Did you use anything you have learned from making Ami while working on Shirinui? Um, look, <coughs> there is a ton of things that we learned from Amaterasu and onto Shirinui that made things really uh, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. The first thing is, when I first started making Amaterasu, and one of, this, one of the things is we didn't actually get a chance to really talk about that because we never did a documentary for Amaterasu. So, so I'm gonna cover some of, that, some of that aspect because it's really applicable to Shirinui and that is, the fur texture. Mm -hmm. When I first made Amaterasu, maybe we cover a little bit of this in the bust, yep. but when I first made Amaterasu, back in the beginning, the one fourth scale one, the the almost the fur texture became too 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 de detailed, and there was lots of strands. Mm -hmm. But you know, of course, she has a beautiful cell shading effect in the actual in the, in the art style of the game, and the whole game itself is just beautiful art style, art style, art style. And we then toned down the fur to be more general sort of shape. So you can see that, yes, there's fur on it, but they're much more like clumped together mm. and sort of very subtle, giving it a sort of cartoony style, but also has the realism of a kind of sharp face, a kind of styling of from that game. So in terms of having worked on Amaterasu, we just apply that same logic, that same style mm. of the fur effect from that and applied it into Shiranui. So that was really straightforward to do that. Then there was, so what other things did we learn making that? Well, look, 
clearly there are some things such as the colouring. We knew we need to put them side by side and the colours should absolutely match up. That comes up also with the, the, the beautiful reds of the markings. The, the, and also the way that we did the swirl effect. Uh, you know, some of the sculpt work, you can see these beautiful swirls. Chucks, before, you know, as we continue that conversation, why don't you tell me what you see going through this? All right, well, like I said, let's, let's carry, from, carry on what you were saying about yeah. the swirls. I really love the swirls on here because these are like, they pop out. I think there's more swirls on them. Yeah. Look at that. Right. In the, in around, the, yeah, around the rear leg and the uh, the main the main kind of wing. Yeah. And it's, it's it's kind of like the what makes what can't be in. Yeah, you know, in really terms nice. of it's like a it's like a it's supposed to be a paint a painting, and it's that kind of traditional Japanese art sort of ink effects and mm. that kind of where you do it with a calligraphy brush. That's how you get that kind of swirl mm. effect, and it's really nice to be able to incorporate that in a statue. And to be honest with you. Shiranui, could you just simply say, oh, it's a white wolf? Well, okay, well, hello, there's something on the back. But, you know, of course, yeah. you, have, you have the reflectors and what have you. But it's not really beyond that. If you just look at, if you just focus, Chocks, on the sculpt itself, and forget about all this intricate stuff up here, mm. how does it differ from a regular white wolf? Well, you know, again, it, it highlights mm. these, these brush strokes, yeah. this kind of swirling effects. Those brush strokes. And there's actually a lot more brush stroke swirls in this than there is compared to Amaterasu mm. as well. So, you know, you're absolutely right. You, you know, you spotted yeah. that. <clears throat> the blacks, the blacks, uh, the black lines and the, the red lines between the, the grooves of those strokes mm -hmm. just makes those wings pop out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, and the legs as well. Yeah. And, and, and look at the tail as well. You can mm. see that. You can see how it's on, oh, it's, just, it's on the other side as well. So if you focus your attention on the swirls, you can really see them throughout the actual piece. Bring in swirls over here, around the back as well. Cool. Yeah, and the clumps of hair that sticks on the back of the rear hind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, I, I have a <coughs> Shiba Inu, right? Mm -hmm. And those are the normal the areas that I trim. <laughs> <laughs> when they start sticking on, I'm like, <laughs> really? Just leave them. Uh, but I would do that to um, to, to Shiba Inu. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jocks, have you noticed? Yeah. What about the markings? Can you see uh, the markings throughout the entirety mm. of her body? It's because you, you brought attention to the to the redness uh, to the red marks of the swirls. Yeah. But how about that marking on the head? Yeah. Look at that. This reminds me of a particular console back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag put it in the comments if you know what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just love it. Yeah. So in terms of the, the body shape as well, Chalks, we looked at how the body shape was of Amaterasu as well, and we kind of took that, but made it a little bit slightly, slightly thicker, just to give a very slight difference to it, but not, not, not much. Very, very, I mean, you would have to really be looking into the... Yeah, to, you need to have to side by side to, right, to, to see right. the difference. Um, but in terms, of, in terms of having the, the actual sculpt and the, muscul the, the muscle shape, muscle shapes, we learn a lot from Amaterasu. Now, of course, there are different poses, but uh, quite there are some similarities. Some of the, of course, Amaterasu has all four feet on the mm -hmm. ground, mm -hmm. and this one has uh, Shimuri has one foot in the air. Mm -hmm. And having have having had one foot in the air, Charles, if you look at that pose, can you mm -hmm. notice anything about the relationship of the feet, the three feet? The relation of three feet. Yeah, what you'll notice, Charles, is. The three feet are like a triangle. Mm. You see that, Chucks? If you look yeah. right there, mm -hmm. you can see that the feet at the back have been open wide, mm. and the foot in the at the beginning here, at the front, is where it's centered in the middle. Mm. So it's not like four feet and like like a like a like a rectangle. Yeah, 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 like a rectangle or a square. Mm. It's now triangular. Mm. And that really lends to a two couple of things. First of all, it makes the pose a little bit more stable. It's stable. If you put it to one side, and let's say you had two, f if you look at these back feet, and right, you'll see one foot chocks is at the front, <laughs> yeah. and one foot is at the back. We actually made sure that if you put both feet the same level, which is a similar, sort of similar to Amaterasu, right? Both mm. the sort of same level. And then you had this foot, and you put it over here, this, this area, so you moved it across. Mm. That's gonna fall over. Yeah, sure. It's gonna fall over very, very easily. 
and we wanted to make sure that in the pose it looked both natural but also functioned to be stable as well. And sometimes jocks it's always a bit of a gamble where we make a statue. We make a statue and we hope that it's going to be stable yeah. because it's in 3D and you don't know until you get physical. Now, since then, we bought a 3D printer, just a small one in internally, that we just make small versions. Yeah. And we put it on the table and oh, it's fallen over. And then we go, oh, let's rework that pose because we want to try and make that center of gravity a little bit more stable. Um, but this was made way before we got that 3D printer chalk. So we kind of like, oh, please let this <laughs> sort of stand, <laughs> sta sort of yeah. be stable. And yeah, absolutely stable. Uh, of course, there is engineering works of, um, of, of pegs in there as well, of course, but in terms of having that, you know, having it like this, we wanted to make sure that you had the, um, the sort of stability of it in 3D and try to hopefully make yeah. sure it, it turned out like that in resin uh, at the physical stage, which it did, mm. which is great news, which is great news. Um, yeah, so, you know, Chalks, as you said, part of the sculpt, that's the wolf, yeah. that's Shiranui. Let's talk a little bit about the reflector on the top. Oh, I'm sure. Before we say, before we move on to the top, mm. just want to make sure that hey guys, uh, we, we did mention there's three feet on the ground, one up in the air, and you can see the the paw print. Ah, yeah, one extra little detail there because I believe yeah. the original all four of them on the ground, Absolutely. so you don't really see any paw prints. So uh, uh, if you turned it over, you would see. But over, but in terms of the seat, because it's on the ground, so yeah. So this is the first time that if you actually got it on display yeah. and you turned it around, or so. You know, obviously you see it mainly, you're going to see it mainly from this angle. Most people will display it like, yeah. like that. Unless you have a, 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 your display has a mirror on this side, uh, right? then yeah. you can see on the Sure, on but this side even well. then, if you just, even very slightly, you sort of start looking around to the other side, you can really sort of see it. Yeah. But sometimes it's just nice to know that there is detail there in the first place. Mm. Cool. So, and I can actually confirm the other feet have... <laughs> quickly looking <laughs> and, and another detail somewhere underneath the tail yeah. I'll leave you guys to find that all the small detail well look let's be honest <laughs> one of the things that we learned from Amaterasu was mm. having a um, butthole there <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, can you see it is it <laughs> yeah <laughs> now there's another thing Jocks mm -hmm. And I would like to hear your opinion on this, guys. One of the things that we did with Amaterasu, the original one, is when we first made Amaterasu, the tail was completely white. Yeah, I think I know where you're going. Yeah. yeah. And when we put that into the um, put that online in the club, people were saying, you know what? There should be a blackened ink tip mm. because it's representing the the, the, the calligraphy and that the, the brush. The, right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So whether or not we. Uh, so they asked us to revise it mm -hmm. to have it there and we asked the club is that what most people want to see mm -hmm. and we ultimately went with that and the actual final production was darkened and it had the, the ink tip of the tail was right. was was um, was dark so can you tell me guys whether or not you want to see Shiranui also have that blackened um, that blackened effect let me know in the comments let us know in the club what you want to see and we'll be very happy to listen to what you've got to say about whether or not to add that uh, mm. To a subject, of course, a license or approval. Yeah, sure. Uh, we'll have to hear your feedback on that. Mm. Uh, so, <clears throat> Trox, why don't we then sort of go back and little talk a little bit about some yep. more of the details? So let's have a little look, look at Ishaku. Oh, yeah. Ishaku on the top, and this is, this is Ishaku. right. Yeah. yeah. So he's the grandfather of Isun. Mm. So he's you can, but you know, there's been a couple of renders of him. Mm. where in art, artwork that you see him and he's looking really old but there's also a young version and this is the younger incarnation and Chucks, can you see his weapon? Mm. Yeah. Now, Definitely. what do you see? It looks like a sword if you look at it if you look yeah. at it from, um, from, from behind from behind if you look at it well, if you look at it from the front you can see it looks like a sword, mm. right? Uh, I'm sure it's not actually coming up on the camera but, <laughs> um, but <clears throat> if you look at the the back, yeah, the handle, the handle, mm. past the handle, there's a little bit at the back. What do you see that looks like, Jocks? Brush. Exactly. It's yeah. got a, like a kind of this kind of oval shape, mm -hmm. oval shape that comes to a point, and at the point has a. Can you see the color on that, Jocks? Yeah. It's got some black ink on it. There you go. Mm -hmm. And then if you look on his back, mm. you can see these sort of a cross shape. 
Yeah, and those are scrolls. scrolls. And can you see that they've actually been tied together? I mean, we've sculpted almost tied together little ropes in mm -hmm. there. That involves a lot of intricate detail because this bad boy is around about two inches tall. If not, not even if not that. Even that. If you don't include the, uh, the front arms, then it's not even that. Yeah. Right. Now, right now, Chogs, this is going to, this is in a, um, in a uh, sort of a resin. And we've actually had a couple of damages to it already. There's a couple of claws that have fallen off over here, but mm -hmm. the final production piece will actually be PVC in order to make sure that you don't have breakages based on that. And we've learned a few, we, we had some production things to consider for that with regards to Isun for the Amaterasu one fourth, and we'll take that into consideration when we go to yeah, go to sure. production on that. Because of course, this is just the prototype, guys. All right, so uh, right, that's besides, that's a, right, move on to the next bit at the top. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be really hard to see on the camera, but we'll have some close-up shots soon for you guys, and then you can see the this symbol. Mm -hmm. with, uh, it's actually your Kami symbol. Yeah, the, the symbol with the flames mm -hmm. at the top. So if you guys are come check out on our website, you can see some uh, Okami cap. The Okami cap was based on that same symbol. That's right, so the Okami symbol. That's from the actual logo itself. If you remove the word Okami from the actual logo, yeah. that's, what's re that's what mm -hmm. remains. And, you know, let's let's be clear about something. <laughs> there yeah, is a, this is a sort of thing going over here. Now, this is significantly bigger in terms of size. Mm. Look at the way this extends all the way back over here. If you compare it to Amaterasu, hers is much, much shorter, mm. much, much, much shorter, and the flame is not as big. It's not flaring out. I mean, this one is much more wider as it comes towards the back of the tail, mm -hmm. the back of the body. Yeah, now, so. can you notice how the, the flame effect is kind of swirling, giving, trying to give you a swirling effect going around, mm -hmm. and then after it goes that sort of roundy shape at the top, it then comes out to all. To 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 uh, comes out to the side. You say they're flaring out. Yeah, and then you have like the swirls of the flames that come, again that comes back from either side of the again well, actually, more there's swirls. Four, there's four of them actually, like one one strand on there. As you can see, one long one this side here. Mm -hmm. Then you have the same one on the other side, and you have like two mini two mini ones near towards the front. Yeah. Yeah, and then I, that sort yeah. of all ties it back into this whole idea of having the swirls along here and mm. the swirls along there, etc. etc. So and you come in like you know, orange, yellow, golden, that, yeah, green, you know, that color, turquoise. The coloring effect yeah. is I, I really like how it transitions, Chucks, mm. between the orange of the center and as you said, into the greens. And it's not just Here's the orange, here's the green, and a really obvious separation between the two. It's not like that at all, is it, Charles? <coughs> no. It sort of very gradually turns into an in-between there, there are bits of yellow as well. Mm. That sort of transitions in between the two. Now this is done in a kind of transparent resin, Chops. Yeah. So you can actually sort of semi, semi see through it, semi-transparent. You can, it sort of really enhances that effect. I don't think you can quite get the same feeling yeah. if it was if solid. The camera colors. looks like it's solid green. But when you're looking from this side, it's, you can see it's translucent, yeah, translucent to it. Yeah. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's much more obvious when you look at it from underneath the underside as well. And as you guys know, if you're an Okami fan, uh, the um, the flame, the um, the reflector, you can see. Yep, the mirror's there. Yep. Just don't break it, guys. <laughs> you know, you know what they say about, about you know what they say about mirrors and. And breakages. How many years bad luck, Chucks? I don't know, three, isn't it? You'll be lucky. I think it's seven years. Is it seven? <laughs> so, moral of the story, Chucks, don't yeah, break it. Don't yeah. break anything, yeah. <laughs> um, absolutely. Mm. All right, Chucks, and then as we move down, we have this, um, you know, you go down through to the bottom. Of course, we have this base, and the base is really matching that of the original Amaterasu mm. in terms of size, thickness, the overall um, aspect, and having that kind of. Um, sort of wildlife fauna in the there, greenery. Obviously, the greenery yeah. and the, the flower effect and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, we definitely wanted to make that kind of matching to Amaterasu's mm -hmm. and but really complement But they it. are different. Everything, the top layer, everything is sculpted differently. The, the, the placement of the leaves, the, the flowers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's also layers as well between the upper dirt and the lower dirt as well. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's not just one colour here as well. It might be hard to pick up, it might look like solid, but it's actually mm. there are different subtleties in there that you can just sort of 
only really see in real life or sort of pick them up on the camera. But before talking about you know finishing this section off or talking about There's something missing, isn't there? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's called these crazy tentacles. Jocks, how many of them? Uh, da, 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 19. 19 individual tentacles. Mm. Now, how would you call them tentacles? It's not, you know. Yeah. If you actually play the game and you see Shiranui, it's like these crazy, like, really sharp rays that are coming out like that. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, <laughs> that is really, really difficult sort of to do. And that was the thing that took the most amount of time. Mm. If you look at the artwork, it looks, it looks crazy, right? If you look at the video of the actual gameplay footage, it's even crazier because there's they're all looking sharp. And I'm thinking, actually, you know what? We want to have these rays come out. And I think we went for the best sort of way, which is to have it slightly wavy and not too sharp at the end to consider the breakage problems. And also, Chox, it's not in, in 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 the video itself. It looks completely white. Right. Now, from a distance, this looks completely white. Mm. Ivory color. Right. Because it's slightly different to the the, the the color of the the fur. It is because yeah. also it has a translucency to it. Mm. It's very 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 slightly translucent. Yeah. But it's not just one solid color, Charles. Can you see oh, that yeah. there are some subtle changes in the hues of the of the whites going through it? Mm. What do you see, Charles? Well, it's kind of what's well, most obvious part will be the tips. It's more kind of a uh, a very light grayish, yeah, grayish color. No, I would say it has bits of oranges and yellows in there. Very, very small oh, right, and subtle. Ones. Right at the edge. Oh, and you, oh, yeah, oh, the, oh, so the, you took the, the tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tips yeah, are yeah, much sure. obvious with the lighter yeah, yeah, grays. Yeah, 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 and then yeah, definitely see the. Oh, so you're going throughout the whole thing. Yeah, going out through the whole thing, definitely some subtle orange. And but yellows. we're talking super, super subtle. Yeah. you can't really see. Obviously, you could have come in and you can sort of mm. see a very, very subtle. Uh, because ultimately it's supposed to be white, yeah. but we didn't want to have it completely white. We wanted to have it almost like it was reflecting some of the lighting effects from, from the, the flame, from the flame itself, mm. right? So and that really, really helped help do that by adding just a slightly bit of uh, subtle changes. And as you said, the grey tips as well, you know, makes a huge difference. Mm. Cool. Yeah. All right. Should we go to the next question? Right, next question. Where are we? Oh, Austin Paul. Um, do you receive input from the series creators or Capcom officers? You know, I'm very grateful to Capcom. The creators, the producers themselves have been really involved. Mm. And they were always involved at Amaterasu mm -hmm. into the uh, Life Size awesome. 1. And there's no difference with Shirinui as well. Really, really proactively coming back to us saying this, that, that, this. Um, it the, was a lot the, harder. And the old Kami caps, I believe. And the old Kami caps. Yeah, it was a caps. lot, lot harder with the original Amaterasu. And uh, you know, when um, Jessica was asking, "What did you learn from making Ami into making Shirinui?" Well, a lot of those issues that we had at the beginning were not issues here. Mm. So they were. It was. It was more straightforward to go through that because we had that experience of doing it before. So, you know, they definitely are involved. They definitely come back and have comments and we, they definitely sort of say what they want to, you know, come back with their, their suggestions. Yeah. And ultimately that's great because it helps for us to produce a, um, you know, a better piece mm. accordingly. All right, cool. Well, that answers your question, Austin Paul. All right then, next question yeah. from uh, James Bennington. Yeah. How did you engineer the solar reflector considering the problems Ami had? Right, okay, so the, the issues that we have, and it's always been difficult for us, and we're always trying our best to improve on that, is that sometimes it leaves the factory looking great, and then latent issues such as shipping guys, you know, courier guys, mm. like to throw it on the ground or whatever it may be, and it can lead to some 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 issues with breakages. Also, to do with the engineer, the engineering of putting the um, solar reflector of Amaterasu, or mm. the original one, into what was quite a small peg. Yeah. Now, one of the things that we did with this, Chucks, if you'll notice, is actually on the, we've, we've added two points of, there are two points of support. Now, if you look at the original Amaterasu, it literally had the peg, yeah. and that's it. Well, the peg on this one over here is actually right here. The peg is right here, mm -hmm. 
and the, this is the you insert it from just to say over here. Yeah. But right here, Chox. The other wing. The other wing, right? In between the other wing, uh, which is over here, there's a point where this actually rests on that. So the first thing is, now we have two points of connecting. Two supporters. But, two supporters, but it still gives this idea of it floating in the air because of course it's not actually touching her back at all. Mm. If you look at it, it's not actually touching her back at all. So in terms of actually having the, um, the support, Physically, there are two points of contact, which is going to make it more stable once it's in there. That is the first thing. The second thing is, shocks. the actual connection point is we actually have, because it's hidden very, very well, the thing about Shiranui, the wings, is actually taller than it was for Amaterasu. Yeah. And it's allowed for us to have a step. At this connection point, there's a step. Now, you can't really see it very easily. The only way you can see it is if you sort of look underneath, you'll be able to see, Chucks, can you see it just on the underneath? There's a little step yep. that comes out a bit, meaning there's more surface area of which to slot in the pen. Now, of course, we still need to go to the engineering stage at the actual production, because of course this is just a prototype, but we will have learned from our mistakes of Amaterasu to make sure that we can apply that knowledge and put it into this piece when it comes to the actual production stage. So I'm pretty confident that we'll get there, especially because, you know, double areas for it to be held up. The second, of course, is the fact that it's got that extra slot size, the extra sizing for that. That makes a huge difference as well. So these are, again, who was asking originally? It was Jessica yeah. was asking, what did we learn? Well, yeah. we certainly learned with that and hopefully that answers. Um, James Bennington's question as well. Yep. All right, cool. All right, next question from Alessio Bucci. What is a Shirinui? A pupper or a doggo? I'm going to go with a celestial doggo. Uh -huh. Would you say she's a pupper or a doggo? I'm going to... No comment <laughs> on this one. <laughs> she's, uh, she's, she's got this, um, this grown-up elegance to that. Mm. And of course, Chibutaratsu is going to be all papa, so uh, we can wait. We can wait to then have a celestial papa back then. Okay. Uh, for, for when the, for when we finally do one of those, because you know definitely chibi uh, chibi is something that we're going to be doing uh, later on as well. Mm. All right. Shall we do some measurements? I think that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. All right. As always, we're going to do a can test. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. So. I have myself yes. right. <laughs> another one. Another turntable, guys. Another turntable. The reason why is so because this base is raised up from from the table. So just to make sure the can the same yeah. start the same height. The same height. Two. Now one of the interesting things with chocks. No surprise. Three cans. Mm -hmm. yeah, actually, just about. Yeah, just, just about. about. Maybe slightly. More. Slightly under. Slightly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Slightly under. Under. Yeah, definitely. Goes around about here, about that, that about there. Your can's a little bit bent. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, it looks to me pretty similar, to be honest with you. But okay, uh, these guys are three hundred and thirty ml cans. They're not yeah. the same as the Americans, who have three hundred and fifty. Three five five, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So. In terms of the actual size differences, uh, it's about three cans high. But of course, Chox, Amaterasu is a creature. Mm. It's a beautiful wolf. It's never all about the height. It's far more about the width. So no surprises, three cans high, yep. bada bing, bada boom. But of course, Chox, it's more about the length. Okay. So really some measurements for us. Yes, that's right. Let's do some height, width, and depth. Okay. Right, so the height from the bottom of the base to the, ooh, careful, to the top <laughs> of the horns, I got that around about 14 inches, so that's 36 centimeters. 14 inches in height, 36 centimeters. I've got the width, obviously, yeah, let's do this thing. So, I just want to hold that there. Yeah. All right, so right now we, we are not measuring from the edge of the base because the flame or the tail. That's a good point. Yeah, the, the tentacles <laughs> or the flame? Yeah, 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 yeah. One of those two are sticking yeah. further back from the base. So, at, for me, at the front. Over here. Yeah. Me, I'm not wrong. I was totally looking at this bit, but okay. Right. okay. From my side, I'll be looking on this bit. So yeah. at the front of the base, I've got that 17 inches. Okay, so that's 43 centimeters wide. 17 inches, 
That should probably live in more, to be honest with you. you sure? probably, yeah. If I'm looking at this bit over here, this needs to come out over here. You want to come out over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are, you, are, you, are you sure this yeah, time? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. All right, if you're sure this time, then <laughs> that is 18 inches, okay? All right, yeah. 18 inches, which is 46 centimeters. All right. Okay. And then the depth is going to be, yeah, from the front because the, mm -hmm. the furthest tentacle will be reaching further out at the front. And again, the same at the back. So the tentacles go past the base. And uh, I've got that at 17 inches in depth, which is 43 centimeters. Mm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So mm. was that 14 in height, 18 14, in, and 17? 18 and 17 in depth. Cool. Yeah. All right. All right. And then the weight, I have that at 5.9 kg. 5.9 kg. 5.9 kg. Yeah. Cool. A nice little, nice weight to it. Yep, definitely. Mm. All right, cool. Um, shout outs, Jocks. Yeah. Shout outs, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, shout outs. Shout outs, easy stuff. Earlier on, I was talking about this post that you can ask us about uh, with regards to the product itself. Mm -hmm. That's in the club. If you're going into that same post, in there randomly, I will, I will put a comment in there and say, first 10 people to reply to that comment will get a shout out from Alex. So it's very random. I'll just go in there and just, just put in a comment and then it's first come, first serve. And on that note, uh, shout out to Jonathan Derazero. That's a new name. That is a new name. Derazero, nice one. Uh, Jordan Rudy, how's it going mate? Shout out to Tobias Benz. We got uh, Jessica Kastik, bada bing bada boo, she has a question and answer as well. Austin Paul as well. Uh, William Jamil Emmanuel, how's it going? We have uh, 3pm Christian Hernandez, uh, Michael Bonner, how's it going mate? We've got Jamil Sode, or Sode, and uh, Eduardo Rivero, last but not least. Mm. Boom! Right. Lemon squeezy. That's it. Now guys, this is the regular version mm. of Shirinui. Now, if you decide to buy the regular version, you now have the dimensions, you think it's right. gonna fit your collection, etc. etc. But uh, we do have well we do have some stats. Do How we? many items this product has. Ah, yeah. you mean the separations of Separations, the parts. Yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do that, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it took me ages to count. <laughs> Well, it took you ages to count 19 uh, tentacles. <laughs> well, there's that as well, yeah, right. of course. All right, so I believe, you know, through production, these tentacles will be in separate pieces, I mm -hmm. believe, yeah? That's so right, So there'll yeah. be 19 individual ones. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe we'll, we'll label them as numbers or yeah, alphabets sure. or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. We'll make sure it's going to be very easy for you to assemble. And assemble them, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so again, 19 separate tentacle pieces, okay? And we have one rather long tail, mm -hmm. yeah, that will become on its own. Yep. And then one massive solid base, mm -hmm. one whole piece of the body itself, all right? These paws are not detachable, it's just one solid piece for the body. And then we have one massive uh, reflector with the mirror included, yeah. And then also a little uh, ishaku, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 pieces. There you go. Mm, 24 pieces for the regular version. So just in case you wanted to assemble something, a piece an hour a day, yeah? Sorry, an hour. An, a, 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 piece an hour, hour a piece an hour. A piece an hour for a day. day. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> the longest, um, longest assembly ever. Well, you know, just got to make sure that you put it properly every time. Yeah. Now, guys, as I was saying, this was the regular version, the exclusive version. Actually, if you would have noticed as it's turning around, that we actually have the, um, we have a, uh, a dot here, which is actually a button, and we also have here jocks mm -hmm. a um, a sort of place to put a rechargeable, uh, recharging um, micro USB, cable. and we actually have here a little small dot, which is actually different. So let's say you guys actually have Amaterasu in your collection right now. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a slight difference is when we first made that one, it was one of the first times we ever had a. It, pin, was, it was the first it time. It was the first one for a inbuilt rechargeable battery that's correct yes. it was an inbuilt rechargeable battery obviously it came with a button and it also came with a usb plug but it never had the led indicator and, Absolutely. The, and the battery was never removable right 
And then obviously after feedback, it was like, wow, guys, awesome idea to have a rechargeable battery mm -hmm. in there because I don't want to keep on buying double A batteries mm -hmm. or take my statue, dismantle mm -hmm. it and then put a, put mm -hmm. a couple of new batteries yeah. in there. So yeah. just having this internal battery was a great was a great step. And then obviously after feedback, as some of you guys might know, the, the statues that came afterwards up until this this one here, yeah, everything has been a rechargeable, rechargeable removable, yeah, yeah rechargeable, replaceable. replaceable battery. So that's right. Um, with an LED, with LED as well, as well yeah. yeah. So uh, no more, yeah, absolutely, no more double A's. Now, one of the things about that is Jox is that it's given us we so the the regular version won't doesn't need to have this. The exclusive right, right, right. does, mm -hmm. and of course the exclusive version, three, two, one, boom. Actually, it's kind of hard <laughs> to see it in the in the dark. Sorry, in the light. We are in crazy, crazy bright lights right now. So if you... You can just about just see, just yeah, just there, underneath yeah. Uh, Shaku's uh, feet. Yeah. And it just turns on. Now we're going to have to have some overlays here yeah. by Jeffrey. Jeffrey! <laughs> Let's do some overlays to see it in the dark. And you can sort of see how that comes in. Because Chops, what you see is that the light effect is on the actual solar reflector itself it's up right. here it's on the reflector mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. and you also have some the, the there's some light sources actually at the bottom internally on the back the, mm. where the you know the tentacles the things that come out mm. they, they they have some bits of light that start at the base now in the dark it's, it was impossible to get it to go down the length, unfortunately, but we have a little bit of a base light starting over here that therefore travels a little bit down. And again, you know, it's obviously in the dark, hard to see. Oh, sorry, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the bright sort of bright studio room, lights yeah. right now, so you can't really sort of see it. But uh, yeah, you know, certainly in the dark, you can see it a lot more. Mm. And one of the things, Trox, that we couldn't actually get ready for this, um, this actual launch unfortunately is that if anybody's bought or knows or seen the documentary on the Amaterasu life size bust mm -hmm. what you'll notice of course is that there is much more of a kind of I should say like a fire effect where it's kind of flickering right and we plan to add that to Shirinui as well. Now, the original Amaterasu didn't actually have that, it only had a lights on thing. The always on yeah. static light for the OG Ami. Ami. Yeah, that's yeah. right. For the OG Ami only had that static one, which is what we have right here, right now. Right. But as we go towards development into production, we will change it so that it has this kind of. This, this sort Animated of, um, fire effect. And obviously, yeah. throughout the production, I'm sure Alex will post in the Collectors Club. You know, explaining all this Absolutely. wonderful, mag magical powers that you have, yeah, <laughs> that he does in the factory. Yeah, so Absolutely, uh, so we, you'll be able to get a better yeah. idea of seeing yeah. how it looks. And it's going to look really effect. good in the dark because right now you have all these flame effect. When this is lit up, you have yeah. the oranges and yellows and the mm -hmm. greens and then underneath, as, as I was saying, the, the, the white internal lights here will kind of uh, bounce off each other. So. In a dark room, you can see the colors at the top and the whiteness underneath and kind of like bouncing from each other. And if it's animated as well, you can see, you can imagine that. There you go, Charles, yeah. you're right. And also even the tentacles at the bottom, I'm going to have it so they're kind of like a little bit more sort of like pulsy flashing oh, to wow. animate as well. So you're not only do you have movement, so your I, eyes are going to have a feast. Mm. You can see the movement of the... Um, of the I'm going to have an epileptic fit, am I? <laughs> well, um, well, you know... Well, <laughs> Soft pulsing, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, not erratic, not erratic pulsing. But well, it won't be sort of, you know, sort yeah. of that kind of flickering. But yeah. it'll suddenly have some movement towards it for sure. Very um, tranquil. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I would say that. Of course, you know, they're sort of soothing, yeah. calming, as much as that can possibly be. <laughs> um, for sure, guys. So that is mm. the exclusive version. Now, let's say that you have um, you found the right space. For Amaterasu, sorry, for, Shir for Shirinui, and you want to compare it actually to Amaterasu, why don't we do some comparisons mm. and compare Amaterasu with Shirinui so you can have an idea? Because people already have yeah. Amaterasu, it's out there in the marketplace. Maybe you even have one in your collection. Yeah. Maybe Shirinui is your first one. 
whatever it may be, it might be interesting for you guys to sort of see how they look next to each other. Should right. we do that, Chucks? Yeah. All right, cool. Boom! Here you see them side by side, Chucks. And we talked a little bit about the length. You know, there are some things that we can compare. Look, okay, if you keep Ami like that, I turn Shirinui. Just, if you have them both back to back like that. Actually, why don't, why don't you turn your Ami the other way? When we're playing back to back again. Yeah, that's what we want to do because obviously Shunu is now facing the camera. Mm. So let's light for light compare the length of the soda reflector. This one up to here, right? Mm. <laughs> we're, we're comparing <laughs> lengths now. <laughs> about, about here, okay? That's the last. Boom! That's why I said I'm going to have Shunu. You can have that. I'm like that, yeah. You want to hold your hand there. Yeah. What is up, guy? No. <laughs> <laughs> and the next, of course, is the tail itself. Look at that. I'm like here. What is up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> and we talked a little bit about how the how the the body shape is all the sim very very similar, and how that you know of course you can tell that they're a pair. You can see how that the Shirinui, um, the fur effect, as we were saying, is very very similar. And this is what we're talking about the tail, guys. Do we have the tail of Amaterasu? It has it in the pain the pain effect here have it like that for sure. Let us know in the comments, let us know in the club, let us know what you think about that. And the other thing is, Chox, the actual reflector itself, you were talking about mm. the, the circle, maybe if you can just give a turn a bit there. Oh yeah, there. There you go, okay. And, and this one over here is just about that. It's the same size. Yeah. And of course you have granddad and you have grandson, same size, same scale, looking at each other like so. Hello, hello. <laughs> um, and of course, the colouring, the, the markings, the red markings on Amaterasu, the red markings on Shirinui. They, to be honest with you, Chox, I mean, you can see that mm. sort of tops of the bases are similar in colour, but the actual, the actual, um, the actual, um, you know, sort of uh, flowers and what have you, are th they're different sizes and all that. Oh, sorry, different places and different mm. sizes. Uh, no, sorry, similar sizes, I should say. Similar sizes. Yeah. Well, they give different. They all come in different sizes. Yes. Yes. Flowers, uh, yeah. So the point I'm trying to make, Chox, is that they go as a pair. Hmm. It goes really, really well with each other. They look great as a pair together, and highly recommended that they go together, basically. Hmm. With the life size bust down the middle. Of course. I mean that was part yeah. of part of the part of the plan for that as well. And of course, with Chibi hopefully coming as well. Mm. If that's into scale as well, you can imagine something going on over there and that's, that's a whole other conversation going on with that. I'll, I look forward to busting out these open when it's time for, for, for Chibi's um, video yeah. eventually. Um, yeah, so there you have it guys, we have. Is there anything you want to add, Chucks? Mm, no, no, well, no. So guys, yeah, it's just to compare, I mean, the, the, the USB battery slots. Let's, you see, do you remember the, the way we were talking uh, about yeah, that, guys? Yeah, yeah. So this was just the button and the uh, USB slot. Well, so the Shirinui one has the improved uh, LED indicator with rechargeable, removable battery. That's right. Yeah. Uh, actually, we have a few more questions, Shocks. Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. So, we just, then, yeah. yeah so we just leave these yeah. as, as they are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, question from James Bennington. How much time went into designing the exclusive and how long did it take to get it just right? Well, you know, definitely we knew we didn't have to think about it too much because mm -hmm. we knew, of course, having had the experience with Ami. Yeah. We knew it was going to have to be the same style, the same flow, the kind of... Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, as I said, one of the things I wanted to improve on was having that animated yeah. effects that we will, we will be adding to that. We will be adding towards that. Mm. Okay? Yeah. All right. So, uh, next question, last but not least, uh, from Austin Paul. Who will follow Shirinui in the Okami line? So, you know, we've certainly been thinking about that and we've been thinking, of course, about Chibitratsu, we think would be a great addition to this line. But of course, if you guys have some other guys that you want to, other suggestions, other characters, put a comment down below in the YouTube, let us know on Facebook, we're always in the club. Yeah. We'd love to hear you know, feedback, see what you guys want to do and we'd be very, very open to listening to, mm. to that. And, uh, well, for me anyway, if you guys really enjoy this documentary, do check out our other Okami line that we have on our website. You know, we have the life-size bus, we have the Okami uh, cap as well. And, uh, yeah, and if you guys don't know, you know, we We're are... working on a 
No, you announce it. Oh well, we know yeah. a uh, you know a mini. Well, not mini. You know, it's a PVC mm. of uh, of our Amaterasu, and that will be coming sort of later on this year as well. Mm. So it really is a nice little collection that you can sort of have in towards Okami. If you're a fan of Okami, that's great because we're going to have a lot of a lot more stuff coming down the line. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe I believe that's pretty much um, pretty much it, Chocks. Mm, that's it. All right, that's All right, another cool. one wrapped up. I'm your host Alex. And I'm Chuckles. FRF is love. FRF is life. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace! Laters! <laughs>